Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty Ten on the Twitter handle, and I'm joined today by Ryan McGinley at the Ryan McGinley on his Twitter handle. Wednesday, August the 9th. Ryan, how are you, sir? Things are good. Yeah, um, halfway through the week, you know, halfway through to getting to the Celtic game on Sunday to watching the game. So yeah, uh, as it draws ever closer, always a big game against Aberdeen. So I'm really looking forward to it. Four more sleeps, as it's known as Ryan, yeah, something like that, yeah. It's, it's always yeah. exciting watching Celtic, so, you know, you're, you're always counting down, you're, you're uh, crossing the calendar for the next game. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, good to have you along, and uh, feel free to fire in your comments in the comment section. We'll try and flick some up and read them as we go along. But first and foremost, I direct you to the strap line that's running along the bottom. We do this every day. We can't do this without you. So in order to keep the YouTube briefings and everything for, for, for free that way, you can subscribe to that. But we also urge you to subscribe to the Celtic Way website and help us keep producing top quality football journalism, covering the club you love. And we ask you to subscribe in that. And you hit that subscribe button at www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Something for everybody on there, Ryan, is there not? There certainly is, especially today. Um, I brought out a Y Scout report on Mike Navrovsky's debut, uh, competitive debut for Celtic against Ross County. A really, a really impressive debut, I would say, from him. Sixty-six minutes of uh, quality, I would say, especially on the ball. So, if you are interested in having a wee, a deeper dive into Mike Navrovsky, then please check that out. There's also an article on the site today, Alan Morrison, and he has distinguished the slight tactical tweaks that uh, Brendan Rodgers has made in his first game in charge of Celtic. So if you want to have a look at that, that is on the website as well. But anything anything Celtic related, you know, we'll probably have it on the website. So everybody, please get involved. As if by magic, both of those pieces appear in the comment section. Hot Guys, do, do yourself a favour and yes, uh, and have a read at them. So yes... Uh, Brian Roberts coming in, missed the last two days. Welcome back, Tony. Thank you very much, Brian. How are you? Hope you're well, sir. Now, we are, Celtic are still in the midst of trying to potentially sign a new defender. Ryan, we spoke about Gustav Lagerbielka yesterday, but today we'll maybe do a more deeper analysis of him because there was a wonderful thread on Twitter. It was called At All of Footy. I don't know if you saw this, guys, but... If you didn't, I'll uh, I'll read out some uh, some decent stuff here that Lagerbjerker could bring to Celtic if Celtic managed to uh, get a deal done and get it over the line. But here's what uh, all of Footy said about Gustav Lagerbjerker, just the kind of prime cuts of the thread that's on it. And if you're on Twitter, it's at all of Footy. If you key in Gustav Lagerbjerker's name, it should come up. So, so far this season, uh, he's playing for... Top of the table team, Swedish team Elfsborg. They've had five clean sheets and he's had two goals in 13 starts. And he's had five goals in his last 32 matches in the Swedish league. He wins 56% of his ground duels. He wins 65% of his aerial duels. He's the highest for long ball passing in the league. But here's the thing that struck me, Ryan. He, he was asked a couple of questions by supporters and he said that Lagerbjörker's press resistant and errors and stress aren't part of his vocabulary. He's always had a plan, whether it be tackling the opponent or making him drift wide. He thinks a step ahead, and because of his height, he's a huge threat on set pieces. And he's a right-footed left centre-back, something that you don't see that often in uh, modern-day football. And Olaf Futi also said that he's an amazing header of the ball. Now, I don't know about you, Ryan, but that ticks a lot of boxes for Celtic, ticks a lot of boxes for myself, and... That thread was very good. I think a lot of Celtic supporters will have read it, but I've just given you a flavour of it if you wanted to go on and read it for yourself. But he, he sounds like a good one, doesn't he, Ryan? Certainly does. It's, it seems as if the scouting team have found another cracker in terms of a, a player coming into the club. If the, if the deal does get agreed between the two clubs, I know the sporting director came out and said that there was nothing concrete at the moment. There was just discussions, yeah. but there was nothing concrete at this present moment. Elfsborg will want to keep them, man, because they're they're gunning for a title. 
and he'll be a large part of their success, or he will have he will have contributed to a lot of their early season success. I think their season starts um, earlier on in the year, if yeah. I, I believe it's it's one of those ones that goes through the summer due to adverse weather in the in the later years or in the later months rather. So, yeah, that that thread was really really exciting towards Lagerbielka. That point that you put across the the one about stress isn't part of his vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Stress and um, you know, that's that's what Celtic fans wanted to hear. I did quote tweet that yesterday to get a bit of traction. People were quite happy to see that that Lager Bielka was going to be fine under press under the press. He's quite press resistant. He'll be able to pick a pass even when players are, are up close and tight to him. That's exactly what you want to see. I did watch quite a few videos of him yesterday. You know, those those clips are available for people to see if you type his name in on Twitter. He's a his range of passing for a central defender is incredible. The fact he can just switch it from left to right, from back to front so quickly, that'll be a weapon for Celtic, especially in Europe. If if he does, uh, if Rogers does elect to play him, um, if and when he does come into the club, you're expecting this deal to happen at this stage. Usually, when you hear about a deal, when two clubs are talking, when it's Celtic, especially with the way that they are working nowadays, you're thinking this is this is a a when rather than an if at this point. So you're you're just hoping that it does get resolved in the next few days. You know, Starfield hasn't officially left the club yet, but everyone's assuming that he will do so. Why not replace him with another Swedish player? You know, Celtic have been quite lucky with Swedish players in the past, even even Starfield, Henrik Larsson, Johan Mialbi, as we were talking about as well. So why not go down that route again? You know, he, he seems as if he's one of the highest rated players in the Swedish league. So, yeah, I, I, I like his profile and he's a player that, that does excite me. Yeah, and you know, as I say, I think a lot of those things from at all of Footy's thread did tick a lot of boxes. And it's obviously some that Celtic have scouted and are very keen to do a deal. So, as everything with these things, it only came around about the weekend that Celtic were interested in this guy, and then they were talking about fees being uh, in the three million pound region. So, deals take time. To obviously has to suit all parties. So if anyone's wondering what the kind of delay is, I would imagine that Celtic are busy in the background uh, doing their due diligence. But he's, he's clearly a person of interest, as I always say, Ryan. And Celtic are clearly asking the question, and the clubs are kind of talking about fees and stuff. So we've got a couple of comments about him with people watching as well. Watched Hazel Finn morning. Here's how you doing. Watched a video of Gustav's 2023 highlights. Looks good. Alan Robertson saying. Lager like likes a pass over the top, as Ryan says, yes. And his long pass and spot on, says love it. And Lanky coming in and saying he's superb in there as well. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what Olaf Footy said. He, he, said. he or she, I say that Olaf Footy, said he's amazing at headers. So there you go, not just good in there, he's amazing at headers. So uh, take yeah. from that what you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, his headers, he did get on the end of quite a few cross balls that resulted in goals for Elsborg. The the player that he reminded me of in that sense in terms of winning headers, probably their last great header of the ball was Chris Julian back in 2019-2020. Remember him under Neil Lennon? His big goals he scored against um, I remember the one in particular against Lazio at home last minute. You need somebody in that box that's going to attack headers like that. Celtic do have big players in their team. They have tall players. It's yeah. just they don't really utilise their head a lot. Um, Starfield did get a couple of headers um, throughout the season. I think it was what three or four, but you know he could have got so much more, especially in his first season. Carter Vickers could have got more headers as well. That header against Hearts was a cracker, but um, yeah, plenty more could have came from that avenue. So it'd be great to have guys like Navrovsky and Lagerbielka who are very good at heading the ball. It seems as if they're good with the ball at their feet, but if they're if they're good with the ball at their head as well, then that. Is a, it's, it's another feather to their bow, in a sense. And, you know, you can't get enough attacking quality. And defenders are now expected in the modern game to be attacking outlets, both in passing and in terms of scoring goals. So, yeah, if, if both of them can do that, then you'll, you'll see a, a few more goals coming this season from the defence. Yeah, and Francis P.C. Green comes in and says, he reminds him of Alan Stubbs with his passing and vision. Big Stubbs, he liked a long ball as well, didn't he? He also liked a header. And uh, Brown Warrior comes in. <laughs> Definite whiff of Charlie Mulgrew with those raking diagonals. Mm-hmm. Tony, yeah. 
Yeah, listen, as long as they hit the target, I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, yeah, it's all fine playing Ronald Koeman type passes, Ryan, but they've got to go to their intended target, and, and I'm all for that. I'm all for guys doing that. But uh, It's a modern game now, isn't it? That's yeah, just and, it also, is. and also you talk about the modern game being, you have to be a threat at set pieces and see if you're tall. You've got to attack the ball, both in your, in your, your area and the opposition's area, so... I want to see more of that because I think Celtic are, you know, the past couple of seasons under range, I think we were a bit weak at corners, weren't we, in terms of scoring from them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an area which can be improved. And how do you improve that? Well, what I've talked about a few times, get a couple of big guys in the team to go and attack that ball when it's in the air. And I mean, really People attack it. are not going to force it. the issue. Yeah. And I mean, really attack it. So uh, I'm, I'm all for that. I would like to see Lager be able to come. Uh, if that's the case, he certainly fits the prototype, he fits the model, he fits the bill, and the reports are we that uh, that Celtic are certainly in for him, and it's a could be a matter of if not when he signs. So yeah, it's all it's all positive for me. I I I'm uh, I'm all for this. If it goes through, if it doesn't go through, I won't be too disappointed. Celtic clearly move on to other targets, which I'm sure they'll have. Patrick McLaughlin asking, does he have a Ronald Koeman type shot though, Tony? Not so sure about that. Don't know nobody said anything about that, but I say I, I'm, and I've said this many times, I'm all for defenders just defending. You know, defending's an art, but it's also well, yeah, it's an art, let's be honest, and I want my defenders to defend first and foremost. Mm. Long raking passes are fine, great, love all that, but go and attack balls in the air, both in your half and the opposition's half. At corners and uh, defending set pieces, clear the danger, mop it up. Mm-hmm. If it has to be row G, row Z, I don't care. I, I <laughs> genuinely want them to to just do what it says on the tin and defend. We work <clears> on <throat> prowess, we work on all sorts of stuff later, i.e. shooting and all that kind of caper, but I just want guys to, you know, master the basics, and if you master the basics, which I'm sure they they have and will do because they wouldn't be interested in a club like Celtic if they can't do that. But you know what I mean? I, I'm flair and all that comes later. The manager can make people better in terms of positional uh, sense, strength, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I just want, I just want to, I want them to do the things that they're brought to the club to do. And if you're a defender, you defend. It's as simple as that. And I might see football in kind of black and white terms, Ryan, but. That's the way I like it. You you and my dad both. My dad always says the same things. As long as you can defend, <laughs> first of all, you're doing a good job as a central defender. That is very true. I, I make the point, yes. I made the point yesterday that's in today's uh, today's article that's on the website. I say that the first and now defenders are expected to be playmakers as well, deep line playmakers. There's the, the, there was a there was a point especially with, with regard to Navrovsky where he played the ball over the top to Maeda. Yeah, yeah. It was very much like a, a sort of Tom Brady quarterback role when he was trying to pick yeah. out his wide receiver. That's that's just what defenders are now expected to do now. You, you didn't see as many long balls, to be fair, under Ange Postacoglu, but Brendan Rodgers seems to have brought that back. And there's players in this team that can really benefit from that that style of play. You look at Maeda, you look at Kyogo, they're going to run for days. They're going to yeah. try and get on the end of these these chances. So it, it's a great new avenue to play for Celtic. And if, if your central defenders can do that, then all the better. What I will say, though, is do you think... I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think that the, the signing of Laga Bielka, along with Navrovsky... Is this to cover a potential exit for Carter Vickers next season? Do you think this is Celtic bringing in a few defenders just so that they can get bedded in because they know that bids are going to come in for Carter Vickers next season or maybe even in January? I know that would be an absolute nightmare for bids to come in in January for your central defender, your top man, arguably your best player in the team. But do you think bringing these guys in, that they, they're, they're sort of safeguarding themselves for a potential exit? Um, not in the short term, but maybe in the medium to long term future for Carter Vickers. I I can only assume that the succession planning starts with every player. Basically, you're looking for, you know, the the, the next one to come along and, and fill that role. But I very much live in the, the short term. Enjoy them while you can. I would I yeah, would not too. encourage the kind of 
you know, or, or the kind of doom and gloom scenario that uh, Carter Vickers is going to leave. I think everybody accept. I said this a while ago. You accept that they are collecting their two hundred and pass and go when they come to Celtic. It is what it is. But I think you have to enjoy these guys when they're around. And if it, that is what Celtic are doing, and it, no, it wouldn't surprise you to find out that it that it wasn't a succession plan and, and covering all eventualities if a player like Cameron Carter Vickers leaves. Of course you have to have people there to replace them, but I think we live in the moment and enjoy Carter Vickers while we can, and whether that's... I'll, I'll worry about that in January if it comes to that, <laughs> or next summer if it comes to that. At this moment in time, Carl, Carter Vickers is at Celtic. He's, you know, he's signed a deal, a long-term deal, and we have him for as long as we have him, and as long as he continues to perform to the highest standard, then you would expect bits to come in from. Uh, to be fair, so I, I just I think Celtic are, you know, they're pretty astute now in the market. Mm-hmm. They kind of know what they're doing. In fact, not so much kind of they do know what they're doing, and I trust. You know, you have to kind of trust the people at the top now who are going about their business quite diligently and getting the best deal for themselves and the club and as and also for, for the players who maybe do see their futures elsewhere eventually. But I I uh, I'm in the kind of camp where I just want to enjoy these players, Ryan, enjoy the kind of ride that wave of success that Celtic are currently on at the minute. And I I said at the time and I'll I'll, I'll go back to it but I just think having a manager like Brendan Rodgers was kind of a statement and that will keep a lot of players there longer because they'll want to go on this kind of uh, ride with him uh, and see what it takes him, you know. And I, I, that's why I was happy that Brendan Rodgers came in because maybe guys who were thinking go out the door, Brendan Rodgers comes in the door, instant gravitas, respect, he's won a lot and he's been a successful manager and I think players migrate towards it and he likes to get to know his players. What's the big thing he spoke about? It's about relationships, isn't it? He forms a personal relationship with every footballer that's at the club eh, from top to bottom. He gets to know them, gets to know their idiosyncrasies and behaviours and he sharpens that up and improves it. And And I like that. And I think players respond to that, warm to that. And if you wanted to say a couple of players that have responded and warmed to that already, you'd maybe pick Turnbull and O'Reilly, uh, maybe even Kyogo and Maida. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with the way things are going at the minute. And if Lager Bielka comes in and it is succession planning and good on Celtic for, you know, for seeing it early, identifying it early, and if we believe Carol Starfield's going out the door, then Hopefully Lager Bielka can come in, or if it's not him, it's somebody else. But just to show that they're, they're acting promptly. I've said this before, that that these are the hallmarks of a big club mentality, Ryan. Mm-hmm. You know, Celtic are certainly on and off the park, acting as a like a big club, a truly big club and doing things the way you and I want to see them done. They've got a quality manager in, they've got a quality group of players, and they're looking to add more quality to that. So more power to them. Yeah, it seems as if you yeah, I would I would agree with everything that you're saying there, especially with regard to the fact that Celtic are acting like a big club over the past what two years or so. I think they've learnt their lessons. We spoke about this yeah. yesterday, but they've learnt they learnt their lessons. They had to I think they had to get ocular proof as to what happens when mm. you don't learn your lessons. But I think they've been stung now once and they won't get stung again. It's they've now radicalised the they've radicalised the recruitment system. They've now got policies in place that mean that good players are going to continually coming coming through. We're not going to be taking risks on players. I'm sure all these players are analysed, scouted. They're probably watched in person as well before they're then brought to the club. It's good to hear that Starfield's agent is actually helping out with regard uh-huh. to this move too. That leaves everyone on really good terms, I think. The fact that if his agent is trying to get a replacement for Celtic, you know, you've got to use these avenues when they're when they're available to you. And if he has spotted a good player, they won't they won't want to sell Celtic short here. They want to get their client to 
Celta Vigo. So they're like, how do we do how do we do that while maintaining a good relationship between his current club, soon to be former club? Yeah, we'll bring in somebody else that's really highly rated that's just came into the, the national setup. I'm not sure if he was actually in the same national setup as Starfield in that January. I don't know if Starfield was maybe uh, was he injured at that point when when that team got called up? Um, so maybe maybe Starfield and uh, Lagerbielka have spoke previously. They've, they've talked about it, and, and maybe Lagerbielka has impressed Starfield when they were both in the international setup together. That could prompt the two of them, both Starfield and his agent, to talk to Celtic and say, "Look, here's a, here's a guy that's coming through who's going to be the next big thing. Try him as a sort of replacement for me." If that's the case, then, you know, I think that's quite astute business. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else you said with regard to the... I, I, this, the, the squad, seem, not the squad, the, the board and the hierarchy, they seem to have learned their lessons from two seasons ago. They're now getting contingency plans in place for players leaving. Um, and, and you were saying about Brendan Rodgers. I mean, maybe Brendan Rodgers was the marquee signing. I still maintain that he was the marquee signing and he can make players into marquee players through his man management. And there's players that maybe were used to Ange Postacoglu's way of uh, standoffish, sort of way of managing, that will have never had a manager like Brendan Rodgers before that puts their arm around them. Look at Kyogo, look at Maeda. They, you know, it's, it's a... It's a default sort of position to think that they just like they just like a standoffish manager. They might they might love a man manager that, that puts their arm around them and says, You're a really, really good player and, and, and gives them plenty of praise. So it is interesting and it seems that it's resonated with Maeda and Kyogo especially because they look absolutely delighted to be at Celtic, even though the manager that brought them through the door has left the club. They seem pretty happy. That exodus that was kind of getting threatened from some sectors of of all the Asian players leaving following Ange Postacoglu's exit. It hasn't happened as of yet, so, you know, it just goes to show you that Brendan Rodgers has this great this great way of pulling players back in and keeping them around. Yeah, the old, the old Godfather 3 there, are you quoting there? Just when you thought they were out, they dragged me back in. Oh, don't, Brendan, don't mention that one. It's Brendan, just, it just doesn't, Brendan, <laughs> doesn't pales in comparison. <laughs> Brendan's brought them back in, has he? Yeah, I mean, I, I tweeted at the time that Brendan Rodgers was the appointment after the disappointment with Ange leaving. And I, I, I still maintain that and I stand by that. And it goes for all the players. I don't think any player would not enjoy working under Brendan Rodgers. Uh, just the way he goes about his business and makes them feel very important and a vital cog in the green and white machine with that arm around them. And, you know, so I, I think uh, if you can't respond to that, then you won't be at the club, will you? Let's be honest. And if you don't want to be at the club while Brendan Rodgers is around, then I, I say good luck to you. <laughs> you know, and, for, and I think Anne's touched on it as well, finding that happiness somewhere else. You know, the, the happiness was in winning and being successful. Under Anne's Poster Coglu, there's, there's more happiness now with hopefully winning and being successful, but also with a manager who is more maybe more personable, let's say, but it's, uh, as I said, just it's horses for course. It's what worked for Ange Postacoglu. It was very successful, and he was successful, and he's now gone. We now enter a new era and a new way of management, and uh, the players can decipher that from themselves uh, and what they what they enjoy or what's better or not. But I think uh, I think certainly a lot of players will thrive because it is Brendan Rodgers' forty making players better and improving what what's already there and also bringing in a smattering of quality too. So I'm, I'm very happy with everything that's happening at Celtic in a minute. Lots of people coming and talking about Cameron Carter Vickers, so we'll just... Uh, Glasgow Rebel comes in and says, I genuinely think Cameron Carter Vickers is happy at Celtic. Don't see him wanting to leave any time soon. And then Gary Thompson says, Cameron Carter Vickers sings in the SPFL. If he sings in the Champions League too, then there's a chance of clubs sniffing around him. We'll see. Yeah, of course, they know that's a, a massive uh, shop window. Don't they, Brown Warrior, saying, Morning, Brown Warrior, how you doing? Contracts only guarantee a bigger fee when they go. You don't guarantee a player not going. If the price is right, or board will sell. On board with that, Brown Warrior, definitely. Of course, that's the way the, the business models run, isn't it? John Boy, 1888. Any quality players, a two-year cycle max, we accept and move on. See, two to three. 
Yeah. Three's the max now. Yeah. And Patrick McLaughlin saying Nick Summers is a test for Celtic when it comes to keeping Cameron Carter Vickers and Kyogo. Indeed. And Alan Robertson saying Cameron Carter Vickers knows the issues with being moved around to numerous clubs. He's found a home at Paradise. That's a fair point well made as well. In a spiritual and football home, very seductive, isn't it? It's hard to give that up when you've been kind of nomadic like Cameron Carter Vickers, mm-hmm. but might want to test himself on a bigger stage at some point. Which stages don't come much bigger than the Champions League, which he's doing with Celtic. So, you know, it just depends how uh, players' mindset right. are. And Jason Lee's saying Celtic are a big club, a huge club even. They just don't have the English Premier League money. Exactly, Jason. Can you imagine they did? Yeah, it would be a frightening prospect. But yeah, yeah. But there's a reason why we're up here, not down there. Because <laughs> they, know, they know, I think I think the Premier League knows themselves what would happen if Celtic get the Premier League money. Celtic are punished by geography. I've always said that, sadly. But there it is. Uh, yeah, so, no, it's... Uh, it's a very positive in terms of Gustav Lagerbjelka coming in. We shall see what happens with that. That's a, that's an ongoing story, but we'll be all over it in terms of keeping you up to date on the, on the website. If you keep your eyes on that, I'm sure we'll be uh, able to tell you what's happening on that front. Now, speaking of defenders, Ryan Kobayashi, Story this morning saying that Celtic may be willing to let him go out on loan. Now, after a bright initial bright start, Kobayashi made he's just kind of fallen down the pecking order, really, hasn't he? Uh, and you know, I, I think he I said before, I think he suffered because of the the Rangers defeat at Ibrooks. He became a kind of scapegoat for that, and I was hoping that under Brendan Rodgers he would be able to rejuvenate himself but it doesn't seem that way does it and uh, we will see what happens with, with regards to Kobayashi but maybe a loan deal suits both parties at this moment in time because if there's Cameron Carter Vickers there there's whose name I forget Rocky Navrovsky <laughs> Navrovsky yep Navrovsky thanks for that and possibly incoming Lager Bielka you have to think that Yuki Kobayashi's uh, game time would be limited, wouldn't there? Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I was initially really impressed by him with his, uh, with his. I think mostly with his passing ability and his reading of the game. He suffered a really two really difficult afternoons. I would say against um, Hearts. I know, I know they kept a clean sheet, but he did have a bit of a shaky game. He looked a wee bit nervy at Tynecastle the second time around. He looked fine the first time when he played that 45 minutes in the Scottish Cup. Yeah. The second time around the game in which Celtic clinched the league last season, I thought it looked quite nervy and was getting bustled off the ball. And it, it seems that physicality isn't his strength, which is a bit of a worry considering Scotland's probably one of the more physical leagues in world football. You're not going to get the time of day to, to sit in a to sit and not get tackled, you're gonna you're gonna face adversity in the form of attacking them um, in terms of tackling attackers, you would say, that, that are gonna come in and try and steal the ball off you, you as a defender. The Ibrox game was an absolute disaster for him. Um he got bullied by John Souther for that header, um really pushed out of the way and, and muscled over. And I think that can do I mean, it can work two ways. It can either rejuvenate a player and kick them on or it can really it can really, really affect them, both mentally and physically, you would say. And I think it done I think it did the latter, unfortunately. I think he does need a loan spell. I think a loan spell to Japan wouldn't do him any favours. I seen a, a tweet the other day. I think if you send him out to Japan, you're you're essentially I think you're essentially giving up on him and sending him sending him back after half a year. Whereas if you give him a domestic loan, you can watch him closely. You know, a team like Hibs. Uh, I don't know if Aberdeen would be interested. I'm I'm just trying to think down the line. Hibs, St Mirren, etc. Kilmarnock. You know, you, you always make that. Well, maybe even not Kilmarnock. I watched their defence at the weekend and they looked really, really solid. So, and really physical too. I think a domestic loan would do him the best. Either that or a loan down south somewhere in the Championship or League One. Harden them up, get them a bit more stronger for the league because there is quality there. There is a reason why Celtic brought him in. There's not. They wouldn't have brought him in if, if he didn't have something about him. You know, the, the way the scouting works, he must have some attributes to his game that he can improve on and become a good player. But he just needs a loan spell somewhere where he can play 30, 40 games a season, get ready for the 
the challenges of playing for Celtic. I'm not giving up on him just now because he's only been at the club for what six months, six seven months, uh, yeah. all in. But you know, it's been a very difficult start for him, and from this position, it, it seems difficult as to how he breaks into the team, especially with the way, especially with the way Celtic are now looking to sign central defenders. But I don't want to give up on him. It's it's, it's a tough situation. You you were, you were talking earlier and. Being a ball playing centre half is all fine and well, but you need to defend. You need to be ready for the rough and tumble. Absolutely. And you can't have one without the other. But first and foremost, you need to be able to defend. And I think when he was asked to defend, you know, robustly, shall we call it, against Rangers and Hearts, he was kind of found wanting on that score, wasn't he? I don't like to be disrespectful to players. The manager's big on that, don't be disrespectful. He's clearly talented because he's at Celtic. But when push came to shove and you wanted him to stand up and be brave and be big in those moments, he was just found a bit wanting. He fell under that high bar and high standard that was set, didn't he? So I kind of agree with you. I would prefer a domestic loan to anybody in the Scottish Premiership and get used to the terrain. You know what I'm like? If you're not going to play, then... Go somewhere where you get used to the terrain and you go to every ground and you get a feel for it and know exactly what you're facing when you come back and hopefully by playing uh, a consecutive and consistent number of games you, you have some to offer when you come back. Wouldn't like to give up on them either. But I think if, as you say, I think if you go back to Japan, then the writing's on the wall there, isn't it? In terms of your, your future at Celtic. So I'll be all for a domestic loan. You know, everyone harps back to Christopher Ayer, Ryan Christie type loans, even Liam Scales, who did well at Aberdeen. So, and lots of people now saying keep Scales as cover. So, it's amazing how that mindset can change and can flip. And Brendan Rogers uh, mentioned Liam Scales a couple of times during pre season, didn't, didn't mm -hmm. he? So, he clearly sees something in Scales that he can work with. So, my challenge to Kobe Ashi would be go and do the same if the manager doesn't fancy you right now, because he said he wants four centre-backs, doesn't he? Four competitive centre-backs. And uh, Rubrovsky, Cameron Carter-Vickers are two certainties, aren't they? And you would think, with an eye on Lager, Bielka possibly coming in, that'd be three, and then A another for the fourth, isn't it? Yeah, the as we spoke about yesterday, it seems as if that fourth option is going to be one position that three or four players are going to fight it out for on the bench, yeah. I would say, as a sort of a auxiliary centre-half. I noticed a few people in the comments saying about Hearts, potentially, for Kobayashi. I don't know what their situation is with regard to with regard to defenders. I know they've got Kai Rolls, who's a good defender. I'm not sure who plays alongside him all the time. But what I do know is that they've got two other Japanese players in their squad as well. They've got the, the second most Japanese players in, in Scotland, apart from Celtic. You know, Celtic have got six, five, six, seven at the moment. But uh, they've got, uh, is it Tagawa, the, the new striker, and Oda, who scored at the weekend. So that even that could be a good fit for him. But at the same time, you might want him to maybe go somewhere where there's no other Japanese players where he can cut his teeth and 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 sort of build himself up and mature himself mentally as well. Because I, I, do, I do think there's a decent player there, you know. I, I thought he really impressed in his debuts, in his debuts for the club. He's opening a couple of games. His passing was good. You know, he defended when needed. But yeah. I think in the, the high pressure, the high, uh, the cauldron games, you could call them, the the, the, the the melting pot games. I'm trying to think of a, a way to describe <laughs> these games, but you know what I mean. Ten Castle Ibrox. I thought he he didn't pass his tests. His two big tests, and that uh, that really sticks in the mind. I think of a lot of Celtic fans. If you don't pass the test at uh, at Ten Castle or at Ibrox, then you're going to get you're going to get criticism, and you're going to immediately be under the. Uh, it, under the under the microscope, you look at Starfield. Starfield struggled to even shake that off, considering his debut was at Tyne Castle. You know, he had a, he didn't have a great performance. Yes, there was mitigating circumstances, but even still, people don't rate him because of that first performance. So it just goes to show you these big games they do mean a lot in terms of that first impression. I always say that the first impression for Celtic fans is absolutely massive. It's even bigger <laughs> than other teams. I, I feel like I feel like if you if you do well, you're already a hero. But if you don't do well, you're already on the back foot. I think Kobayashi um, 
after initially doing well, being in those high uh, high pressure games, he didn't pass with flying colours. Jamie Cameron coming in, says I haven't seen enough from Kobayashi that he would keep him to be fair. And Alan Robertson comes back in and says skills can defend. He needs coaching on passing and to make the right decision when it matters, but he's got raw talent. I think you'll find that's what Brendan Rodgers sees as well, and that's what he's working on with uh, young skills at the minute, one would conjecture. But yeah, uh, it, it remains a kind of conundrum with Kobayashi, doesn't it? And uh, also as well, uh, there's also Stephen Welsh too, who got honourable yeah. mentions and dispatches in the pre-season games from Brendan Rodgers. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the four that he kind of relies on in those positions, Ryan, uh, and, and the assumption that Lagerbiel could be one of them and is signed, or, or if it's not him, an an other signing, because mm. he did say they would bring in a centre-back if and when Carol Starfield decides to to leave the club. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that's intriguing me at this moment in time, Ryan. Yeah, it intrigues me as well. I, I find I think talking about the squad just as interesting as watching the games because I like <laughs> seeing the dynamic with all the different players, who is fancy, who isn't, and where are they going. You know, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to football <laughs> like that. I like knowing where players are going and their trajectory, whether they're going to a better club or a worse club. I like to see how they've got on. You know, I think it's the, the football manager mentality and me of playing that game, playing the, the game on the computer. You, you just get used to talking about players and where they're going and where they're transferring to and where they fit in a, a current team. So... Yeah, I, I think with regard to Welsh, you always want to see a Scottish player do well and Celtic need homegrown players for their quota for the Champions League. But I honestly just do not see where, where his next game is coming from, especially when you look at Lagerbiel could potentially come in. That's three centre-backs that are ahead yeah. of him. He's, what, 22, 23, 24 now, round about that age. And he needs to be out there playing first-team football. Now is the time to be getting games under his belt. I think a move maybe... Away from Scotland would be the best thing for him. If, if those teams in Italy are still interested, that were interested two seasons ago, you know they might even be able to get him on a cut price. If they still see the potential that Welsh has got in their team, then they should pick him up and, and, get, and give him a shot. You look at players like Liam Henderson, Arden Hickey is probably the most notable example. He was incredible in Italy. Uh, Josh Doig, uh, Lewis Ferguson... There's a track record now. Italian teams want these Scottish players because they're hard working and they know that they can come in and play these systems and they know they can get them for quite cheap as well. Yeah. So it's a it's definitely a market. Much like how the Scottish League is now shopping in the Japanese and Asian markets, Italy is now shopping in the Scottish market. Yeah. And you did see that what 20, 30 years ago. Was it Joe Jordan, did he play in Italy at some point? He did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're seeing a bit of a renaissance. I'm going to use an Italian word as well. Uh, you're seeing a renaissance in, in Italy going for Scottish players. So that is good to see as well, because I think that only bodes well for the Scottish national team in, uh, in the process. Going back to your first impressions, Brian Roberts makes a pertinent point. Henrik Larson had a nightmare in his first Absolutely. game, Ryan. wonder what happened to him, eh? Mm-hmm. I know. Yes, he did indeed. Everybody remembers that pass to Chick Charnley who rattled it in Celtic Lodge to one Easter Road and yeah, all sorts were said about Henrik Larson, but hey, there you go. There was a video going about a couple of days ago. Who was it he scored in, uh, who he scored his first goal against? Was it Breakin or something like that? Berwick Rangers. Uh, Berwick Rangers, the yeah. League Cup, yeah. Where was that played in? Was that was Tyne, that in Berwick? Tyne Castle. Castle. I thought yeah. it was. It did look as if it was Tyne Castle. That's an interesting one. But, um, yeah. You know, the first of many, <laughs> and you wrote about every single one of them. Uh, there's quite a few of them that are stamped in my brain, uh, Ryan. You know what I mean? So that that being the first one is certainly ingrained in the mind because uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the first of two hundred and forty-two and three hundred and fifteen. Yeah, but he did all right. The boy, <laughs> didn't he? The boy. Yeah, did he was good, all right, as they say. Yeah, uh, hopefully Lager Bielka can come in and kind of continue that line of Swedish players that have did okay at Celtic. Let's put it that they've way. Been right. yeah, <laughs> they've been all right. Yeah, they've been all right. Yeah, I think I think Starfield's quite a um, a worthy inclusion as well. I know it'll be a f- it'll only be because of two seasons and in the second season he was injured for that wee portion of games in which Jens was getting more of a run in the first team, but. 
I think history will be very kind to Starfelt. Now, we're assuming that he will leave the club. I don't expect there to be any hitches with regard to this deal getting over the line. You know, he'll be working under Rafa Benitez. Um, so that, that'll be interesting for him. I think Celta Vigo seem to have all their financials going the right way. There doesn't seem to be irregularities in that end. So I think it's a rather, it's a, it's a when rather than an if. He'll get his move that he wants. But history will be kind to Carol Starfelt. Part of a really, really good partnership alongside Carter Vickers. And, you know, if I was wanting to lose one of them, I think I'd much rather lose Starfield and Carter Vickers at this, at this juncture. Yeah, and I think five trophies out of six and an unbeaten league domestic record alongside Cameron Carter Vickers. So he'll always have his detractors and his doubters. But, yeah, it's, uh, you will fall on what particular still on that one uh, with regards to Starfield. So, yeah, he, he contributed to two years of a uh, great success at Celtic, so we, we wish him all the best. Now, you touched upon this on Saturday as well when you were writing about it and you were talking about Joe Hart. Now, everybody seems to have an opinion on Joe Hart. One of those who had an opinion and spoke about it on the radio last night was uh, John Hartson, and he kind of defended Joe Hart. Um, a lot of Celtic supporters still want another goalkeeper to come in. So still still talk about Levakovic. It's not going away, is it, uh, Ryan? No. So we'll see what happens with regards to that. But John Hartson, speaking last night, he said, Joe Hart is not brilliant with his feet. Joe's OK. Last season, I think he took a few risks in tight scenarios, but he's a brilliant shot stopper. He sees the danger. Uh, Celtic are digging him out for a couple of little mistakes he makes. But on Saturday, the ball was played over the top several times and he was on his toes. His reactions were brilliant, straight out to clear the ball. Listen, everybody knows where Joe Hart's frailties are, and that is with his feet. So sometimes you need to tell him to play in a different way. But Celtic would really miss Joe Hart if he was to go away or if he was to be dropped or left out of the team. Uh, Celtic would miss his qualities because he's got all the experience in the world and he still looks very, very fit and he can still make good saves. Yes, he's had a couple of mistakes, mistakes here and there, but tell me a goalkeeper that hasn't. I think that's a fair assessment of of Joe Hart's tenure at Celtic, Ryan. I mean, uh, lots of people jump up and down about it and he does cause unnecessary, uh, pardon the pun, heart flutters among Celtic supporters when he does get the ball at his feet. Could have given away a penalty on Saturday. Uh, was maybe lucky not to. But I think in terms of... Uh, no one's questioning his ability. He is a tremendous shot stopper. But you just kind of think that he has been great for Celtic in the two years that he's been here and things just kind of naturally run its course. And I think if you were to canvas most Celtic supporters, they would want somebody to come in, not so much challenge Joe Hart for that number one jersey, is to basically take it off him, take the gloves off him. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Uh, I th- I think he's a I think he's an okay shot stopper. He makes the sh- he saves the shots that he's expected to save, but I'm not entirely confident with him pulling off the big the big saves and big games. Um, even <clears throat> even in the the league, I mean, I, I I keep on going back to that game, that two each game against mm. St Martin at Celtic Park. Those were two shots that he probably should have saved, and he didn't. It seemed as if the European form then creeped into his domestic form, and I I can just see a slight regression in his game. Yes, I know he has been a great servant for Celtic over the last two seasons. He's done a million percent better than Barkas ever did for Celtic. You know, there was a point in the 2020-21 season, Celtic had three goalkeepers that they could potentially be playing. They had no idea who was going to play. It was basically whoever was picked on the day, it seemed... Um, there was no cohesion with regard to who was going to be in between the sticks, the Celtic goals, and that that then caused disharmony in the defence because they didn't automatically know who was playing behind them in the goals. Uh, with Joe Hart, yes, he's been a great signing. I'd say he was arguably one of Ange Postacoglu's best signings in terms of value for money, arguably our player of the season in his first season, but I think there has been regressions in his game. He had a bad performance on Saturday. I, I can't, I can't, um, 
I can't sugarcoat it enough. I, I can't sugarcoat it or or talk him up or anything. It was a bad performance on Saturday. He totally flapped for the first goal that uh, Ross County scored. You know, he gets caught in no man's land. He then tries and gets the ball, and he's so far away from the ball that the, it goes into the back of the net. It was his fault, along with a, a slight with Navrovsky because he gets beaten in the header by Jordan White. But Jordan White is very, very good in the air, so that can maybe be excused. But the goalkeeper was all over the place. He got himself lost. Second goal, he can't do anything about. But that that instance where Simon Murray went down looking for a penalty, a better striker, as I said before, a better striker will get a penalty out of that decision. Um, out of that uh, passage of play, you know, they'll make a meal of that. And I don't think VAR would overturn that if that was the case. It was one of those ones where if there was contact made and it goes down, there wouldn't be enough to, to overturn it. It's, uh, yeah, Joe Hart for me needs to be replaced. I know that Scott Scott Burns of the Daily Record said that there won't be a new goalkeeper unless a current goalkeeper is sold. You've got, to, I mean, for me, that's... Not good enough. We seem to be we seem to be improving in every other area. We're improving in the centre back position. We're improving in the midfield, um, but we're not improving in a position that is going to be the difference between us winning and losing or losing and drawing games. And that's in goals. I just think it's a I think it's a dereliction of duty. If I'm being perfectly honest, I think we're taking a risk in terms of not bringing in a new younger goalkeeper that's good with the ball at his feet. Yes, I know that our new defenders coming through the door and Lager, Bielka and Navrovsky are good at playing with the ball at the feet. They can take that job off of Joe Hart, but I want my, my goalkeeper to play with the ball at his feet and make big saves in big games. So, yeah, I ran over, I guess, with Joe Hart, but <laughs> I, I just, we, Celtic need a new goalkeeper. It was so obvious on Saturday that Celtic need a new goalkeeper. I feel like it. I feel like I'm shouting into the abyss. <laughs> I know. I know a lot of people are feeling the same. I think it's so obvious that Celtic need a goalkeeper at this stage, and at the moment they don't seem to be in for one, which concerns me a wee bit. Well, lots of people agree, and there's lots of comments coming in about Joe Hart. So we'll take a few of them. Thomas Muirhead, been a big fan of Joe Hart throughout his career, but you can't argue with the facts that he's the end of his. He's at the end of his career. Celtic must up the upgrade the goalkeeper position as soon as possible. Joe Powell, time's catching up with Big Joe. He's been great for two years, but we need to make a move now for a new number one. Uh, Charlie McGarvey says, nope, the mistakes have become too common. Not here to be sentimental. 100% Tony, we can thank him for his service and we move on. He has clearly regressed. Barkas is not a yardstick we should be measuring Absolutely. anyone against. Yeah. Uh, and that mappy comes in. You, as in me, I think, keep saying we all. No, we certainly didn't, don't, and never have never done. Only some, and usually on Celtic fan sites and clickbait media outlets, have called for Hart to go. I've not called for Hart to go. I've called for somebody to possibly come in, challenge him for that position, and then maybe uh, take over the jersey oh. from him, and then he's there as backup. Twitter, so Twitter isn't a, an accurate um, yeah. sort of representation of real life, but it does seem as if the majority of fans on Twitter want a new goalkeeper as well, and they've noticed that there are problems in that area. Yeah. It's becoming a real urgent problem for me. Joe Pearl saying, Joe will end up like Alan McGregor at Rangers and Cost Celtic. Then the fans won't love him anymore. <laughs> yeah. Colin Strickland, far too many mistakes. He's never been a good goalkeeper and flaps at everything he needs replaced. Uh, and Plunge McNugget, Morning Plunge, Hearts has brought professionals to Celtic and he's a leader and a great guy, but he's not good enough to be the Celtic goalkeeper anymore. Francis P.C. Green, Big Joe's time is coming, he's been good for Celtic and vice versa. So, yeah, I, I, again, another one who divides opinion, Ryan, but I think a lot of Celtic supporters would feel more comfortable if they got a new goalkeeper in. Michael Ross, it's simple. We need Celtic need a better keeper. There you go. So, whoever that may be, or if it isn't, then Celtic will soldier on. But if he does stay, and if he does cost Celtic moving forward, then you can always reconvene Ryan and say, told you so, all that kind of stuff. And love it saying, agree that Joe Hart would be a good backup. I think he would mm -hmm. be a great backup to another new goalkeeper. It's just my thoughts on it. But if he stays... Like every Celtic player, get behind him, and uh, hopefully, yeah, he doesn't cost them, Ryan. Moving yeah. forward, 
it's not um, and, it, and like I always say, it's nothing personal. It's strictly on a footballing basis. I think Celtic. Uh, I think Joe Hart's been great for Celtic off the park as well. He's become yeah. a right leader in that in that dressing room along with Cal McGregor. And you would see Greg Taylor and uh, Carol and uh, Cameron Carter Vickers as well. I know there's a few others in there that I've maybe not mentioned, but they seem to be the main leaders and, and voice uh, and sort of uh, speakers in the dressing room. The ones that conduct the the huddle, they're the ones that are talking. So he's been a great signing in that sense, great signing for two years. But it's I can't allow sentimentality. You know, he was great two <laughs> years ago. You know, he, he was he really he shut me up two years ago with with how good he was. Um, but there are bits to his game where I think if Celtic are looking to improve and they're looking to to improve in Europe, then they've got to address one of the areas that cost them in Europe last season, which was in goals, because he gave the ball straight to. Uh, a Leipzig uh, attacker following a VAR check. You know, Celtic got away with one. The Celtic fans were celebrating a VAR goal getting disallowed and they were still celebrating when the, the Leipzig boy put the ball <laughs> in the back of the net. That that's a bit embarrassing. It's a bit it's a bit annoying too when you when you see the fans were all delighted and then twenty seconds later they were they were raging because they just conceded, you know, they'd got away with one and then Joe Hart basically gifted them gifted Leipzig a goal. You don't need to gift a team like Leipzig goals because they're already good at making them. Um, so, you know, you shoot yourself in the foot with stuff like that. I just think there's too many mistakes creeping into his game, which is natural in the decline of a goalkeeper. You know, you're not going to beat your your tip top for, for your whole career. There is going to be some sort of gradual decline and I think you're starting to see that with Joe Hart. You don't even need a particularly young goakeeper. You can bring in a 28, 29-year-old who has young in goalkeeper's terms who has, has his game sussed out. You don't even need a project. I know I talk about maybe bringing in a young player from South America, Brazil, Argentina, and, and developing them. For Celtic, that could just be one of the areas that they don't have an, They don't have a, a project in. Much like Kyogo. Kyogo's not a project. Kyogo's a main man at Celtic. You could just say, at the back, you've got, you've got a goalkeeper in there that is signed purely to make saves not to make any money on you'll make your money on him in the Champions League with the saves that he makes that will accumulate Champions League points and Kyogo up front who'll score goals that will accumulate Champions League points I think everywhere else you can dot the team you can dot the team with projects and players that you're going to sell on in a couple of years but in terms of a, a goalkeeper we need to get that sorted Hazel agrees let's be honest she loves Joe but for Europe she you have to get a goalkeeper well there you go that's a uh... It's not a kind of Joe Hart baiting session. Just it's a, I think it's a it's a feeling that's and an emotion that's very high in a lot of Celtic supporters. I love Joe Hart. I love what he's brought to the, the club. You just sort of see the kind of natural ending of a career looming large, don't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, as I used to say, it's the hurtling down the hill on the bogey with no brakes, Ryan. Basically, mm-hmm. uh, for those who are old enough to remember making their own bogeys and vehicles and hurtling down hills and you know where you're stopping. And the only way you could stop was to crash, basically. (laughs) So you just don't want that for Joe Hart either, for that to happen. Yeah, father time. Father time catches up with everybody. I think that's the... And I'm not saying that he's he's completely finished as a goalkeeper because he can make good saves. He did make good saves against Athletic Club last week. But I would say that there is a regression and it's now starting to seep its way into the league form as well. You know, he looked pretty untouchable for a lot of league games. Now he's looking like a bit of a target on the back. And you, you think of players like Bojan Miofsky at the weekend for a, for Aberdeen, he'll be looking to exploit that because Joe Hart has looked cheeky to start this season. He'll be looking to sort of get on, on the end of that and try and profit with a couple of goals. So you're just hoping that he can get his act together. Alan Robertson's with me, Pram Wheels bogey. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about, Alan. Thanks for that, for backing me up on that. But there you go. Old Sorry, school, it wasn't against old, it wasn't against the Athletic Club. It was Wolves. It was Wolves he made the save <laughs> against. Um, uh, TJ, TJ's pulling me up on that one. Yes, I do. Yeah, he did get a night off. I was wondering why I wasn't moaning after the after the Athletic <laughs> Club game. Indeed. Yes, and Francis Green. Yes, remembers those days as well. There you go. Yeah. Oh, we didn't even mention the fact that uh, Lagerbielka is a baron as well. He's 254th yes. in line for the Swedish yes. throne as well. Ma- Mappy's just pointed that out to us, yep. Yes, yes, indeed, 254th in line for the Swedish throne. There you go, eh? Mm-hmm. Excellent. 
it, and Brown Warrior comes in and says reality has no time for sentimentality. I don't I agree with that. I, well, yeah. I said that I would. I want Joe Hart to be replaced, but uh, there you go. So yes, indeed, another fifty-five minutes. I think there was over five hundred watching at at one point. So we thank you for that, guys. We always say it every day. We we value your contribution. We do, and uh, we direct you to the ticker tape running along the bottom. You can help us by subscribing to the Celtic Way website, which helps us produce the videos and produce the top quality content, which we endeavour to write every day on the website. And it's all for the click of a button. There's always deals going on. And if you visit www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, you'll see all sorts on the website, but it also helps us. You support us in the process, and that's what we implore you and ask you to do and we thank everybody from the bottom of our hearts that have done that and uh, continue to help the the community and the website grow because we kind of built it up from scratch Ryan and yeah we we're proud of what we've uh, done here but we have to keep evolving and keep moving on and we can't do it without your help we like to involve you which is why we flick up the comments and, and because we just don't like to talk into a vacuum. We like other people's points of view, give ourselves food for thought, and we just hope that you enjoy uh, the way we kind of try and stimulate debate on the programme. And you, you, you genuinely help us, and it's an hour and however long it lasts. It's a the morning's a special time for guys like myself and Ryan because we look forward to it every day, Aidan as well, we do. and uh, and just the interaction because there's nothing better than talking about the club you love. Um, so thank Absolutely. you for that. Yeah, we're in a very privileged position where we can do this every morning as well. So yeah. you know, you get your as much as the people in the comments are getting their daily fix of Celtic, we get our daily fix too. I know we write about them all day, but we also get to talk about it and air it out into the public and see what engage with people's engage yeah. with people's uh, responses are because it's good to gauge these things. It's good to see what people what other people are thinking because you know our, our opinions at the end of the day they aren't gospel; they're just opinions. We are, we are fortunate, and I stress this. I've always stressed this that we're fortunate and highly privileged to have a, a vehicle and a platform to express our opinions. But by opening it up to commenters and crib, contributors, we like to give you that vehicle and that chance to express your opinions as well. And there is no right or wrong. Some opinions are more controversial than others, but isn't that what it's all about? I, I think that's what football and being a supporter is all about and uh, yeah I think everybody enjoys the community that we've tried and strive to build here and we we very rarely uh, have to ban people which is a testament to you guys because you conduct yourselves uh, impeccably to be honest and it's well there's, moderated nothing, too. there's nothing worse than scrolling down the comments and trying as Ryan says to moderate it whilst keeping your professional head on it in, in the chat. But, yeah, we invite all opinions uh, and we we try to give you the floor as well as often as we can. And we enjoy it. Uh, we, we, you might look at us and think, tell your face. But, <laughs> you know, we, uh, and we don't take ourselves that seriously either. So it's, uh, But we thank you for joining us every day, 10 o'clock each, as Pete McG would say, run about that, isn't it, Ryan? We, you know, some there has to be some prep, guys. So, as, as we're hitting the button just about tennis, we're believe me, we've been up for a couple of hours doing various background stuff. So, not just throw it up there haphazardly. But thank you so much. Uh, I've enjoyed today. Wonderful Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Thursday's my day off, so I think I'll be in the capable hands. I'll leave you in the capable hands of young Ryan and Aiden. Your old dad has to, your old dad has to get his beauty sleep, but that's a that's a continuous work in progress, isn't it? Because <laughs> they don't make mirrors the way they used to, but there you have it. But <laughs> thanks, everybody, for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed that. We'll do it all again tomorrow, Friday, and all throughout the season, and nobody's more excited about it than myself, Ryan, and Aidan. So take care. Uh, all the best, and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. <laughs>